My name is Desmond Blair. Uh, currently, I'm a project manager at the University of Texas at Dallas. Uh, born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Started drawing at the age of three. Um, really started with uh, my grandmother giving me coloring books as a child because we were trying to figure out how I was gonna write. So I tried writing on feed, tried like just doing a bunch of different stuff. And I ended up learning how to write with both of my hands. But in order to build a dexterity, you know, whereas most kids would get coloring books, it was like, you, know, you just color, and then the kid, like, scribbles all the side lines. My grandmother would just give me coloring books, and just, she was there with me. And really, it was an exercise to build a dexterity, but I think in the process, I developed a love for sitting down and drawing stuff, sitting down and coloring stuff. I found Bob Ross when I was like seven or eight years old. I started watching his, his uh, show on PBS. Just really doing stuff uh, with my hands creatively. It just, after a while, it just became something that I was really like in tune with. But it started, everything started with us trying to solve the problem. It was just me and grandma. And that was our thing. Like she would give me coloring books and I would color. Me being an artist, especially with I have a hand, I think it's irony in a sense. Um, but I think it's it's for a reason, you know. I think, you know, God makes us all the way He makes us for a particular reason. And just the fact that my talents would be artistic in spite of having what you would think most artists would need in order to produce a piece of work. Um, I think it's irony in a sense, but it's also meant to send a message to people, you know? And I guess I've always felt that way. I don't always think about it. You know, I just discovered, you know, that I could draw and stuff when I was like a little kid. And I had more of an eye for spatial relations, really, I think. And just being able to put ideas down on paper and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know, I think it's irony in a sense, but then there's a message behind it, you know? And that's something I've had to struggle with by not having hands, is just fighting to be able to attain a certain level of precision and control while creating something. That's something I continuously work on, you know, just trying to get better at it. favorite part of painting I would say it's weird um, like with me painting to some extent it's I've gotten back into it to balance out the fact that I've been doing so much work digitally and so I would have to say my favorite part about it is the fact that I'm actually touching something I'm involved in moving something because even growing up a lot of that stuff I feel like to some extent it's like you involve your body. It's not just, you know, you're doing it with your hands, but 
there's muscle memory involved in it. There's a bond that you form between you and the surface that you're working with. So to some extent, um, I would say that's probably my favorite thing about painting is that it involves me as opposed to the work I've done digitally. I can connect with it and then I actually have something to take away, you know, that I can hang on my wall. But to show that I did this, I produced this, and it was through my contact with it that I was able to create something. Um, now I would have to say my least favorite part of the process is, you know, those moments where you overwork an area and you have to step back from it and then kind of wait and come back to it. But then even in that, you learn something new because you have to figure out how to approach it. And with me using oil paints, like I have to let it dry sometimes for a couple of days, but that gives me time to think about it and relax and really just come back to it. And I would say that's another part of painting that I really enjoy is the fact that it's kind of my departure from everything else to where I can just really relax and just connect with something personal. Who inspires me? Every time I get that question, like people ask me that, it's not just artists. I would say the first artist that really inspired me was Bill Watterson. One, because Calvin and I had a lot in common, just as children, like my mind. Once I started reading that comic, I was like, this kid is just like me. But not only that, the style is very gestural. And then once I found out about his process, him using India ink and, you know, watercolor and, Bristol board, like I actually started to try to mimic some of that stuff um, probably when I was 19 years old. Uh, but he was the first artist that inspired me, but just in terms of people that have inspired me and helped me along the way, like the list goes on. I mean, I have my mom, my family, my aunt, they've always been there um, to really just support me and just kind of like push me in whatever it is I do, but then along the way, I've had like my doctors at Scottish Rite, um, some of my school teachers, some of my professors uh, in college, um, and then like my friends. And th that's the crazy part because I have I have a fair amount of friends, and I would say a lot of them they don't know that they inspire me, and they tell me that I inspire them. But you know I don't see that. I I see it the other way around. You know. They kind of keep me moving and I just have had all of these people throughout you know the course of my life in, in different chapters I would say that have been there to just kind of you know pull bits of, of wisdom from and so um, just in terms of both artistic and just in life I've had like so many people inspire me and I continu continuously find new people so it's like that's something that's like a never ending process. It's like I'm just like a, a magnet. Like I just, you know, like try to learn what I can learn from everybody I encounter.
How does art affect the world? You know, there's really something I, I think most people don't think about. Um, and as a creative, you run into people, it kind of annoys you, but then you, you understand, like, I think there, there's so much beauty in things, people don't realize it, even down, you know, the clothes they wear, the buildings they enter, the, the chairs they sit in, like, everything has to be envisioned by someone. Like, that vision comes from somewhere. You don't just have a standard issue guide for creating even the most basic things that people interact with. And um, just on a global scale, I think the difference between artists or creatives is that they have an eye, or we have an eye, that allows us to pick up on things that most people overlook. And I really think that that's important, and that's another reason why it's important to uh, share those abilities, is because you can catch stuff with your eye that people may walk by every single day and not even notice. Um, and I really think that's, in, that, that's what photographers do, that's what photographers do, that's what painters do, um, just anybody, designers, that's what they do, like down to the automobiles we drive, the cars somebody envisions that you know and I'm pretty sure in the process they don't think about how many people will be driving this car it's just that moment where you envision a form and then combine it with the function or, or figuring out how it will come to fruition um, and I think if anything that's kind of like the advantage that, that artists have over you know, maybe just a slight advantage over the general population. personally between this ideal of perfection versus imperfection especially with me not having hands you know they tell you as a kid oh you have a disability oh you're different oh you're not like everyone else well that implies to, to a kid and I, I struggled with that when I was younger that well this person was born perfectly and I wasn't and so I think to some extent that's what in the long term, because I'm still developing, I would say as an artist, but in the long term, that's what would separate me. Because now I'm, I'm getting to the point to where I do that intentionally. I leave imperfections in my paintings. I don't want my lines to be so crisp because it speaks to them, that struggle and, and just being able to appreciate the fact that 
in nature, nothing is perfect. We have things that we see that are normal, that may repeat a normal pattern, but it's those anomaly, anomalies and those things that are different that really allow us to appreciate the individuality, even us as people. The fact that we're all different in some way, shape, or form. And I think that would probably be um, my greatest strength, the thing that, that I would like to separate me from another artist, the fact that I do that intentionally. We explored the large world around us, and we found a million noisy, moving, colorful objects. And if you step into his world with his mind, you will see it quickly change into a beautiful, exciting world of fantasy. large world around us and we found a million noisy colorful objects the most important part of this painting i would have to say it had to be the motion um because just even watching they compete in his videos there's so much power to the style there's so much there's so much strength but behind the way he drifts like he just powers through his corners and there's like he's fast too like, and I just wanted to make sure that speed but also that power was conveyed in the image so it had to feel grounded but at the same time it had to feel weighted in such a way to where you can feel him moving off the canvas and so that's really what I was thinking of um, when I did the crop for the image, when I decided what area I was going to paint, because I wanted him to be planted firmly. I wanted him to take you off the canvas. I wanted you to have to keep, have trouble keeping up with him, because it's the same way with the drips. And like just, I don't know, again, just going back to inspiration, just for him to be so talented at such a young age, like, that speaks volumes. So I feel like if I wouldn't have been able to capture that weight or that movement and that sense of presence in the painting, and I would have failed with the piece. So it all started with the crop and just making sure that was right. And I'm in just having it framed and set right to where he really has a sense of movement, a sense of motion, and where the person's eye is gonna be drawn to that. You know? We explored the large world around us, and we found a million noisy, moving, colorful objects. And if you step into his world with his mind,